we had uh, various things going on. I think we got started, I think, before revival. And then we had revival. And then we had a uh, family night last week with a special, with the kids and everything. And so we've kind of just been a little bit of hit and miss along the way. And uh, so if you missed the first few blessings that I talked on Psalm 23, that's all right. Uh, because this one just going to flow right on tonight uh, with it. But I want us to look tonight at Psalm 23. And let's just, we're gonna, I'm going to read the whole thing as I've been doing every, every night that I go to preach on it. And I want to focus tonight on the last part of, of verse number 3 uh, where it says that he leadeth me in paths of righteousness. That's what I want to talk about tonight, last week, the last time. I talked about how he restores uh, my soul, and uh, but tonight we're going to look at the last part of verse number three. But let's read it together. It says this, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Let's stop right there and let's pray over the reading of God's Word. Heavenly Father, we come before you one more time tonight in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we love you. We thank you for the privilege to be in your house. We thank you for your abiding presence in our times of trouble. When we're in the fire, God, we've got an assurance you are the poor man in the fire tonight. And I pray that you would bring comfort the hearts right now as they're chase, facing challenges of life. And God, I pray for your anointing tonight as we bring this word. Lord, help me to preach it clearly. Help me, God, the Lord, to relay it unto our people tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody say it. Amen. Amen. amen and amen. Amen. As we look back and we talk a little bit about what we have been uh, studying here in Psalms of, uh, chapter 23, one thing, if you've not been here, one thing that I have been talking a good bit about were the habits of sheep. Amen. As we look at this, it talks about the Lord is my shepherd and David grew up kind of looking and examining himself as simply as being a sheep and the Lord is leading him. And in each week I've kind of been bringing out some attributes, if you will, about sheep. Well, the last time that we talked about this, two weeks ago, I talked about how sheep can become downcast. And if you were here, if you remember, I actually put a video up on the screen of a sheep that was downcast. And what it means is where that sheep is laid on his back and he's got his feet stuck up there in the air and he's got his feet there kicking and it don't matter how much that he wiggles and he turns and he twists and he rolls but that sheep does not have the ability to get back up and it will kick and it will weary itself to the point that it just can't move and then blood circulation uh, goes from the feet and gases can build up in the stomach and that sheep can actually die uh, because of this. Amen. But I brought out about how that there are times just as a sheep can get downcast and get into a situation where it has struggled and struggled until the point it has wearied itself and it gives up. We ourselves can get to a place where we are downcast, where we have been through struggle after struggle after struggle, and now we have become empty on the inside. Our souls have been weary. As a matter of fact, Brother David got to this place as well, because he said in Psalms 42, verse 5, he cried out, Why are you cast down, O my soul? And he was talking about, I'm weary in my soul. I'm empty. I am out. I have nothing left to give. Oh, but the wonderful thing is, we all go through those times. David went through those times. But the wonderful thing. 
telling you is that we have a shepherd that comes to restore us. Amen. That word restored literally means this, to turn back. Amen. What will the good shepherd do to a sheep that is downcast? He'll come and turn it back on his feet. Amen. When we get to a point and we are weary and we cannot, uh, we think we can't make another step, I have found it to be true that the good shepherd comes by and somehow gives us another step. Amen. When we think we can't go another mile, when we think that they just can't make it to another day, we cannot raise this problem one more time or we are just going to scream. Amen. We're going to give up and walk away from everything. I have found that the good shepherd has a way just in time to come and to restore his sheep and to give us strength to keep on going. Anybody know what I'm talking about tonight? We have a good shepherd who restores our soul in our deepest and our lowest places of life. We've got a good shepherd that helps to get back on the track and, and to get back up on our feet. Amen. Now the thing about this being downcast in our soul, if we were to be honest tonight, sometimes the sorrow that we face is what to, uh, from what I'll call self-inflicted wounds. Amen. Oftentimes, our bad choices are the source of our sorrow. I want to say that again. Sometimes, the, our bad choices are the result of our sorrow. Excuse me. Our sorrow is the result of our bad choices. Amen. Amen. Through studying the sheep, I've been learning things about sheep. Amen. One thing and another thing that I have learned about sheep this week is that sheep apparently are naturally destructive. Amen. That if you leave them to their own, if you leave them alone, that they naturally have bad habits, uh, that they naturally uh, will do the same things over and over again, and it would destroy the very thing that sustains them. I want to share this with you, this destructive patterns of sheep from, uh, from this man Philip Keller's little book been looking through. Listen to this, talking about sheep. He says that a sheep will walk the same path over and over and over again. They'll follow the same trail, which ultimately will cause ruts and the ground leading to uh, erosion. One thing that you find out about, especially when we're in Israel and things, there ain't, I don't think there's a flat piece of ground in Israel. In many other places, there, there was, you might go to a valley and they, that would be flat, and that would be about the only thing that was flat in the nation of Israel. Everywhere we went was hills, and I remember when we were coming into Jerusalem, there would be sheep all up on the sides of those hills, and they'll make their ways up there grazing uh, in different areas. But one thing sheep would do, they're going to go, you ever seen, you've been to the mountains, you ever been to the mountains? and see old cow path where cows go up the hill and they rush like that. And sheep would do the same, very same thing. And what would happen on them hills, they keep going in the same place. But what happens when it rains, it begins to erode the ground. Another thing that sheep that do, like other animals also will do, they will graze on the same patch of grass and they'll eat on it and they'll eat on it until they eat that grass right on down to the ground and then it begins to damage the roots and then they became weak. And guess what happens to that grass? Now it's become weak. The roots have become weak. And it can become infested uh, with parasites. And then when the parasites and the bugs and the worms come to that weakened grass, guess what's going to happen to the very sheep themselves? They themselves are going to become infected. They themselves are going to get the the parasites, and they themselves are going to get the worms. And so whenever you allow a sheep to go on their own, if you do not shepherd them, if you do not lead them or guide them, they will destroy the very things that they have been given to sustain them. Amen. Very simply what this man was saying about sheep is that they're destructive. You just put them out and leave them on their own. They will destroy that pasture if you're not willing there to manage them and to guide them and lead them where they need to be. And once again, I say that to say this. 
and how will I say that? We learn by David, and we learn by our Savior as well, compared to human beings to sheep. Because the fact of it is, we got a lot in common. A lot in common. Whether you know it or not, I talk about the old sheep being destructive. destructive. Oh, you can look in the mirror yourself, amen? Yeah. There's one thing that we have in common. We're destructive in nature, amen? The Bible says every one of us was born into sin, amen? And a fact, I believe this, I think sometimes, I believe it's often easier for us to do wrong than it is to do right. Yeah. Ecclesiastes Solomon wrote these words in chapter 7. He said this, For there is not a just man on the earth who does good and does not sin, amen? I'm going to tell you, it's easier for us to do wrong than it is to do right. Brother David said these words in Psalm 51. He says this, Behold, I was brought forth in guilt, and in sin my mother conceived me. Yes, what was he saying there? He was saying that our sin nature was in us from birth. That inside of each and every single one of us as flesh and descendants down from Adam and Eve, that we've got a sin nature in us. If you don't believe me, I mentioned this Sunday morning, I'll say it again. All you got to do is examine a little kid, amen? You don't have to teach a kid to be bad. You don't have to teach a kid to lie. You don't have, you don't have to teach a kid uh, to develop bad habits. You know, it, it, it'll come naturally, won't it? If you just let them enough, amen? If you leave a kid alone without any guidance, uh, uh, the result will be destruction, amen? Anybody ever left their little two-year-old, three-year-old alone in the living room or in the kitchen? If they can get them doors to the, to the cabinets open, then what's going to happen to all the Tupperware? Every bit of it's going to come out, amen? All the pots and the pans is coming out, amen? You leave them alone in the... And it, you better be careful when it gets quiet. They say that's when it's bad. Something really... We're destructive by nature, amen? It's in us. Uh, uh, it is our sin nature. And you know that there are certain things, there are certain things that kids will grow out of. When I was a little kid, uh, Kimberly's little nephew, got him, his, his hair just as blonde and white. Well, I used to have that blonde hair, amen? That really pretty little white hair with cotton top. I mean, I'm gone now. I, I grew out of it, amen? <laughs> Went from blonde to brown to, to gray. <laughs> some kids will have asthma and they'll grow out of asthma. There's some kids that have a stutter problem and they grow out of that stutter problem. Or other issues of, uh, in life that they may have that they were little. And they will grow out of it to problems and difficulties that they struggled with finding their way as a child. They will grow out of it as they age. But there's one thing that we do not grow out of as we get older, and that's this old sin nature, amen? Yeah. That is this old flesh uh, right here, amen? The Apostle Paul, the, apop the Apostle Paul, even declared this in Romans chapter 7. Listen, I put it in the New Living Translation. He says this, I have discovered this principle of life. That when I want to do what is right, I definitely do what is wrong. He said, there's a battle going on within me. Right. I love God's law with all of my heart, but there is another power within me that is at war with my mind. Ain't that what I hear where it starts? Right. Right. Yeah. It says, oh, what a miserable man and a person that I am. Isn't that true? Boy, when we're battling that flesh within us yeah. and we want to do what's right, and then if we, we give in to that sin, boy, it, it only makes you so miserable, amen. There's that battle going on there. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? And then he gets to verse 25. He says this, thank God. I like the King James says, thanks be to God who gives us the victory. But this says, thank God, Jesus is the answer, right here. Christ our Lord. So you see how it is in my mind. I want to obey God's law. But because of my sinful nature, I'm a slave to sin. He said there's a battle that rages on the inside of me. And it's destructive. 
and I do that which I do not want to do. Can I tell you something, friend? We will wrestle with our sin nature to the day that we die. If the Apostle Paul had this to say, amen, that there was a wrestling, that there was a battle uh, between spirit and flesh going on, good and evil inside of him, my friend, it'll go on inside of us. Paul was saved here. Paul was filled with the Holy Ghost. Yet he still battled the sin nature in his flesh. So understand, naturally, we're sinful beings. Naturally, this flesh, we are sinful beings. Don't bust your bubble right now tonight. There is nothing good inside of you. There's nothing good inside of me. We read this in Isaiah chapter 53. It says this, All we like sheep have gone astray. We all like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of all of us. Amen. He says, boy, as sheep, we want to go and do our own thing. Amen. We go our own way. Here is the problem with us going our own way, us being stubborn and wanting to do our own thing. Listen to what Proverbs says in verse 14, or chapter 14. It says this, there's a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way to his death. Amen. We all have seen we want to go our own way, we want to do our own thing, our sinful nature. But the problem is, often the ways that seem right and the ways that this old sinful nature wants to go, guess what? It leads unto death. Amen. The ways of, of our flesh always lead to destruction and they always lead to death. We are self-destructive by nature. Man, apart from God, always gets worse. A man, apart, the further he gets away from God, the worse he will get. If you don't believe me, you look at the United States of America today. Amen. As man, as government, as we the people have rejected God's leadership, as we have rejected the word in school, as we have rejected the Bible in our schools, as we have rejected God and the Ten Commandments in the courthouses, amen, our nation has not gotten better, but it has been in constant decline, amen. When you get away from God, I'm telling you, there's nothing good in man. There's nothing good in us tonight. None of us sin here. By his sin. Nothing good is in. Understand that's the pattern of sheep. Yeah. We're self-destructive. We're self-destructive. But there's nothing, nothing we can count as good right here. Amen. Oh, but the, the shepherd had the plan. Yeah. 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 That's the pattern of sheep. Sinful by our nature, amen. We go our own way, our ways lead to death. But the shepherd had a plan, amen. And first of all, it is this. He came to rescue us from our sin, amen. He came to rescue us uh, from the sin that was leading us unto a devil's hell tonight, amen. Not only did he come, he didn't send somebody to rescue us. He didn't send Luke, uh, an angel. He didn't send Michael. He didn't send Gabriel. But he himself came down from heaven to rescue you and me from the guilt of sin The pattern of sheep is sin and destruction, but the pattern, the plan of the shepherd is salvation. Amen. He came down. We are not righteous. We're nothing but sinful creatures. But he that knew no sin became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God. Amen. 
Anything good in you, it ain't you. It's Jesus. That's what makes me righteous. That is what makes me a good thing. It's Christ within me. It's what makes me good. He is our salvation. He has given us His righteousness that we may be right with God. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory. Thanks be to God who gives us forgiveness through the blood of the Lamb. And thanks be to God who takes our sin and casts them in the sea of forgiveness tonight. The shepherd had a plan. We were a mess, but the shepherd had a plan. He came to save us through the cross. Amen. And every sin that you have ever committed in that old sinful nature, right. it was placed upon Jesus Christ Amen. and he took it to the cross. Amen. Every sin, the sins of the world, he took them all upon him. And when he went to the cross, he was treated as a sinner. For man. He was treated as a criminal, beaten. He was beaten, suffered the worst death at that particular time on the face of the earth. He did that to save you. Amen. Because he knew you couldn't save yourself. Just within man, all he does is mess up. All that man does is get it wrong. All that man does is bring destruction and death. But Jesus came to bring life. Amen. He came to be life. But you know what? That wasn't all that he came to do. He came to give us a gift of salvation through the cross. But he also comes uh, to lead us in righteousness. Amen. He comes to lead us in truth. Jesus is not just interested in getting you saved and saying a prayer and putting your faith in him and saying, okay, I'll see you when you get to heaven. No, he wants to have an active role in leading you in life. Amen. I'll use this example or not. She don't like it. Let me see your hand. Hey, God. I paid a price to have her as my bride or bride to be, didn't I? I? This is a gift that I gave, that I sweated for, that I worked for and paid for. Uh, I had to eat five Cracker Jack boxes to find <laughs> But there is a price that I paid, amen, just, just as an example, as a gift. She didn't pay for this. I paid for this. And it was a gift unto her, right? But see, that's not all that I want to give her, just that pretty ring. And it's not I see in 50 years, amen. But as a husband, I want to have her as my bride. And not only do I want to give her that, that gift of my love, but I also want to lead her as a husband, amen. Understand that Christ, he gave you a precious gift. It wasn't diamonds. It wasn't gold, baby. It wasn't silver. But he gave you the gift of his blood. His blood. He paid for it out of his precious life tonight. He gave a precious gift to have you that you might be his bride. But listen to me. He didn't say, oh, I see you. No, wait a minute. He didn't say, I see you in heaven. He said, all right. I want to lead you. I want to lead you in paths of righteousness. And the wonderful thing about our Lord leading you, He's never going to lead you wrong. Amen. Because see, His name is at stake, Brother Terrell. He is going to lead you in a right path. It might not seem right to you in your fleshly mind. Amen. But when we follow our husband, when we follow our Savior, He's going to lead us in a right way. Amen. 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 Our Savior wants to lead us in paths of righteousness. He gives us that free gift of salvation that He offers unto us. But then He says, Look here, I want to now lead my sheep. I want to play an active role in your lives. Amen. The good shepherd wants to lead us in paths of, of righteousness. But sometimes the problem 
with his old heart and it seems. Amen. Sometimes the problem is with his old heart. Jesus wants to lead us in a right way. He wants to lead us in paths of righteousness. But sometimes his old hard-headed sheep, we don't want to listen to the shepherd, do we? Oftentimes we want the benefits of having a shepherd. We want the benefits of the shepherd watching out to, uh, and keeping us safe from the wolf and providing for us, but we just don't want to follow him where he wants to go. If the sheep, we got to be willing to submit to his voice and submit to the leading of where he's going. Amen. Too often we want to be stubborn and we want to be persi- we want to be uh, persistent and pursuing old paths and grazing on old polluted ground. And he said, boy, you just follow me. I'll lead you to green and pastures. Amen. The shepherd wants to lead you in paths of righteousness. He wants to save you first. I asked a lady today, I was talking to her. And the Lord impressed me in my heart. I, I've done what the Lord led me to do, and I left it right there. She fell in my office and said, this woman about died. Her name, uh, her name's Dolores. She about died. We've been praying for her. And I'm telling you right now, she should have been dead. Caught in a wreck, stomach busted. For the last, since last May, she ain't ate nothing since last month, since last May. Feeding to esophagus had been sewed, sewed shut. Her intestines had been cut off right now. She's got a stomach right about this big left. And next Tuesday, they're going back in there to put her all back together. Connect her esophagus to her stomach, her stomach to her intestines. I mean, she literally should have died and she did. And she come here today, I told her, her a lady come to church, Mr. Glenn brought her, and I was just shocked at how well this girl was looked at. She's 40 years, 40 years old. I mean, she's a miracle. And the Lord impressed on my heart just to ask her, say, I said, ma'am, I said, I want to ask you a question. We are talking about how good God was in this. I said, I want to ask you something. Said, God spared your life. I said, but if you would have happened to have died in that car wreck, do you know where that you would be today? Do you? Are you, are you certain today? That you would be in heaven. And she reassured me over and over again. Yes, she knew the Lord as her Savior. And I said, because that's the most important thing. Amen. That is the most important Because I said, you were that close to death. I said, don't you waste your second chance. If you ain't saved, I said, you can get saved right now. Amen. Because you might, not, you might have another crack on the way home. We promise so the most important thing that God wants to do in your life is to save you and to give you eternal life. That is the most important thing that he wants for you. But he also wants to lead you through this life. He wants to guide you. Amen. Because we read there in Isaiah, and like sheep, we, we, we like to go our own way. And we'll stray over here. And we'll stray over there. But the shepherd knows that he wants to keep us together. And he wants to lead us in a right way. Amen. Because even as believers, even as we're I mean, I know we can get off track. We, we, we can get off track as believers, and we can get in some pastures that we don't belong in. Amen. You say, well, Jesus isn't here physically. David was a shepherd over his sheep. He was physically there. And, and Jesus is not physically here. Oh, but he still leads his sheep in the paths of righteousness today. Amen. How did you do that? I want to give you three things to consider. Very simple things, but the three things in which and how Jesus still leads his sheep today. Number one is this, holy boundaries. Amen. 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 What do you do with a sheep? Around here we got fences. We got boundaries. Amen. Right. And they'll take them and they'll let them animals out in this pen for a while. But they can't leave them there for so long because, like I say, what will they do? They'll destroy the land. They'll destroy the grass. You have to move them to another area. Amen? But one way that sheep are guided or animals are guided is through boundaries. It is through fences. Amen? Do you know that God has given his sheep, Jesus given his sheep, some holy boundaries and some holy fences uh, to keep us where we need to be. And they come from God's holy word tonight. Amen. 
that those fences and those guides of, uh, through life are, are built by the commandments, are built by principles uh, and precepts uh, in the Word of God, and they are there for our benefit, amen? Right. Yeah. Some people will say, well, all the Bible does uh, is take all the fun out of things. So. All, all the Bible does uh, is take all the fun out of things. Well, the Bible does say that, that there is pleasure in sin for a season, amen? Ain't no doubt about that. If it wasn't, uh, if it wasn't some fun to it, none of us would do it to begin with. But the problem is that sin will always lead to death and destruction. The Word and the holy boundaries of God's Word have been given to you, child of God, for your benefit. This is not just about being holy. We want to strive for holiness. He says, be holy for I'm holy. But also the Word of God and the commandments of God, the precepts that are given here to guide our lives, they're also for our benefit. What? To keep us and protect us from ourselves. Because we self-destructive. We'll tear some up in a hurry. We'll mess up our lives in a hurry. Amen? God gives us boundaries for a reason. It's not to keep us from something good, but rather to protect us, honestly, from ourselves. And that we as the sheep, we've got to understand, we've got to say, all right, God, your ways are right. I was reading in Nehemiah today, Nehemiah chapter 6, actually it was beyond that. And it talks about how Ezra, Ezra the faith priest, got up with the book of the law and he was standing on a wooden platform. The Bible says that Ezra the priest, he was a prophet, was standing on a wooden platform like this and he opens the book of the law and as soon as he opens it, all of the people stand up. That's why some, some pastors will ask you to stand for the reading of God's word. They stood up and they stood there all day as they're reading out of the word of God and as they were reading... As Ezra was reading, the people began to weep and cry over their sins. Yes, they had great respect for the Word of God. Amen. They had a great respect, and as it was being read, they knew it wasn't simply coming from some man, but they knew it was coming from God, yes, and it God. gripped their hearts. Do you know what we need, sheep, tonight? Is that we need a greater, greater grip on the Word of God, a greater respect for the Word of God tonight, that we don't just take it as lightly and as some suggestions, and well, that's good, and I like that, I don't like this. No, we ought to get a hold of this tonight, and he says, this is what I'm giving you to guide your life. This is a roadmap through life, and you'll do life my way, I promise you, it'll be a lot smoother. He didn't promise it'd be bad, he didn't promise it'd be perfect. But I'm telling you right now, we like sheep like to go our own way. But Jesus, that's why Jesus says, I am the way. Amen. And I want to encourage you tonight. Maybe you've been taking the word of God lightly, the truths and the commandments of God lightly. Can I encourage you to say, no. Even though culture may say that this book is outdated, that the holiness and the truth of this book is outdated, that no, I don't. I stand firmly on the Word of God, and I want to honor the Word of God with my life. God still guides us and leads us in paths of life. There is a right and there's a wrong. I know in this day and time, it's just, it's just all gray here. There, there is no real right and there's no real wrong. There's no boy and there's no girl. There's no this and there's no that. It's all just gray. That's not the word of God. Amen. There's a right and there's a wrong. Yes, it's, black, it's black and white. Amen. It's very simply laid out. And we need to get back to that. What's right is right and what's wrong is wrong. Amen. He guides us. He guides us, guides us in paths of righteousness Lord. with his holy boundaries. But also, we've been given the Holy Spirit. Amen? Yes, yes. We've been given the Holy Spirit. Listen to what Jesus said. 
uh, in John, it says this, however, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will what? Guide you. Amen? I'm reminding about, you ever watch them sheep herders? I've been watching little videos, and the shepherds will be there. Now, sometimes they'll use a little dog, and the dog will run in. He push this way. The dog push this way. And that dog, man, that dog's just as quick. And he'd be on this side, and he would jump over the sheep, and he's on this side. And then he'd jump over it. It's amazing how fast that they are. Right? You know what? The Holy Spirit comes to what? To guide us. Amen. He comes to lead us. Now, I know this, when we start getting to the right, or we start getting to the left, what does that Holy Spirit do? Amen. He starts bringing some conviction on this heart. If you don't have any conviction, let me tell you something. You better be careful because maybe you have grown cold. Amen. But the Holy Spirit is your guide. And one way that he does that, he alerts you when you're getting off to the left or to the right. I don't have this on my truck. She has it on her truck or her car. I was driving the other day. And you, I, I'm, you know, driving with my knee or I'm driving with whatever. And you get over to that line. This one looks like a fudge. And you get over to this line. Look at the fudge on that side right there. And I don't, I don't like it. But it keeps, me, oh, it keeps me focused on where I'm going. It really does. I really like these little, I don't know if y'all noticed on this highway out here, when they made it, they, when you get to the to the white line, it's got little bumpers, little buds, little buds. I like that. I sure do. I'll be looking at the radio, or I'm looking over here, or whatever, there, and I'm over there. That's how the Holy Spirit works in our lives, amen? We start getting old. I'm so thankful for His leadership, amen? I'm so thankful. I've been given the Word of God. To direct my path as I am going through this, He leads me in paths of, of righteousness. Now, just think about this. I just love this out. Even about business dealings and just everyday life issues. Have you ever been, brother? Have you been dealing with people, dealing with people on a business thing, or I've been dealing with business people, or want to rent something to them, or buy something from them? But man, it's something you don't even know that person. But it's like the spirits inside of you saying, don't do that. If it's about a business dealing or buying a car or whatever the case may be or dealing with somebody. And it's like the spirits inside. No, don't, you don't got no peace about it. You don't need to do that. You don't need to buy that car. You don't need to get in business with that person. Amen. The spirit of God will lead you in the right way. Amen. If we learn to listen to his voice, sometimes we got to be careful. We hard-headed sheep. We hard-headed sheep. And we just butt on through it our way. And we get some of them self-inflicting wounds. And, we, and then the tears start coming. And then we, God, why'd you let me do that? Should I try to warn you? He'll guide us. But notice this right here. However, with the Spirit of God, He'll guide you in all, into all truth. Yeah. Not just in some areas. I'm so thankful that He does it in all areas of life. He does it in our walk with, with, with God. He keeps us in right standing with, with the Lord and leads us in paths of righteousness. But He also guides us when it comes to business deals. Every part of life, the Spirit of God, they're working. Amen. Lord. It says this, for he will not speak on his own authority, for whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. Right. I'll tell you something about the Holy Spirit. One thing, too, any, any drawing of the Spirit, inkling, inkling in, the, in your spirit, it will always align with the boundaries and the Word, the Holy Word of God. Amen. I've had people say, well, I felt like the Lord led me to do this, or the Lord led me to do that, or the Lord led me to do that, and it was contrary to what the Word said. If that, the Spirit of God will never lead you to do something that is contrary to the Word of God. If it is, you say, oh, that's the Spirit. The Spirit's leading me to do that, and it's contrary to the Word. 
that's not the spirit, that's your feelings, amen? That's your flesh, that's that sinful nature that is pulling you. That's that war Paul was talking about. He said, I'm pulled this way, and I'm pulled this way. you got to be careful. We've got the, the Word of God, the Holy Boundaries He's given, but we've also got the Holy Spirit, and they keep one another in check, and they guide us in paths of righteousness. And let me share with you uh, this one more tonight. Again, we've been given a holy example. We've been given a holy example. You ever thought about this? That, you ever heard this old saying, lead by example. Lead by example. You know that's what our Savior did. Amen. Comes to talk about living right and the paths of, of righteousness. Our Savior does exactly that. He leads us in, in by example. I want you to think about this. Jesus did not sit in a faraway heaven, in a perfect world, in a perfect environment, free of temptation and pain and sorrow, and then tell us what to do. But he came and left heaven, and the Lord became flesh. He left his glory. He became a man, and he lived among us for 33 and a half years. He did not just simply tell us what to do. He led by example. Amen. Listen to what we read in Hebrews chapter 4. It says this, seeing then that we have a great high priest who's passed through the heavens. He ascended back to heaven. And now he's at the right hand of the Father making intercession for us. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession of faith. And then it begins to explain this high priest. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses. He says, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Amen. He understood that temptation. He understood that drawing. Amen. But guess what? He, as God in the flesh, never sinned. And then he says this. He gave us, that means he gave us a perfect example. Amen. He leads by example. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace in times of need to help. Amen. You know what? When it comes to forgiveness, when it comes to loving others, when it comes to serving, when it comes to finding temptation and right on down the line, do you know that Jesus has given us an example that we can follow? What did Paul say? Paul said he put it like this. Paul said he put it in his word. He said, follow me as I'm following Christ. Amen. He said, that's the perfect example that we need to keep our eyes on as we go through life is Jesus. He leads us in paths of righteousness with his example. Amen. Yes, but you know what I love? He knows the sheep. He knows the sheep. Yeah. We got his word. We got the spirit. He's given us his own example. Of how to love people and how to forgive and, right. and all he's given us his own example. He lived on this earth in the flesh. But you know what? He knows the sheep, we still gonna get messed up, amen. As sheep, we still gonna get off track, amen. We he knows, and he says this, we got a high priest who can sympathize, amen, with us. And over he understands the struggle that is within us. And that when we need help in times of trouble, and when we need grace when times that we've got no track, he said that we can come boldly to the throne of, of grace and obtain mercy, amen. In other words, that when we do mess up, and we, we can still come to the cross, we come back to his feet and say, Lord, forgive me. I messed up. I am just a, a sinful man and I've got on track again. But you know what? He's right there with grace and mercy for us tonight. Woo, aren't you glad we got a good shepherd tonight? He knows that we're the best. He comes.
is all the way down from Adam. That sinful nature is in us. But Jesus come to save us from sin. And though we still wrestle with this sinful nature, he comes to guide us with the Word and the Holy Spirit and who is example going before us. And boy, even Just as the father ran unto the prodigal, I am running after thee tonight. I am coming after you with a heart of love and passion and grace. Oh, don't you see? Don't you see, my child, my love for you? Don't you see my forgiveness? Oh, don't you see my love that I want to lavish and to pour out upon you? I want to wash you, clean your wounds tonight. Oh, come unto me. Trust in my salvation. Trust in my righteousness tonight. Oh, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Would you trust in him tonight? Let me tell you something. Ain't another nail that needs to be nailed. Ain't another thing. There ain't nothing that you can do. We got preached in Sunday night. We must trust in Him tonight. Trust in Him alone for our forgiveness. Trust in Him alone for our righteousness. Trust in Him alone to get us to heaven tonight. Are you struggling? Have you been struggling with it? Can I ask you to come tonight? Maybe you need special prayer. I would invite you to come to this over as they say tonight. Ooh. 